hope you're having a good week. Um, I am going to go over a review for your second assignment. And I believe the second assignment was um, about division strategies. Let me find it in your packet. Yes. Assignment number two, the topic is um, division strategies for one and two digit numbers. And if you are doing the worksheet option, you have a page that has arrays and factors on it. And so we're going to review arrays and factors. And then on the back side, you have some division story problems to do RDW with. And then as far as for if you want to do the um, task-based learning, you have a perimeter problem, a fencing problem, I believe. Yes, fencing a garden where you're given a set amount of money and like the cost uh, of uh, fencing per meter and you have to figure out some different possibilities that you could uh, do for your fence. Um, so drawing two possible plans. So how do all of these things relate to that topic of division? We're going to start with arrays and factors. So we're going to start with the, um, the worksheet portion of it and review what arrays and factors are. And the reason why I chose arrays and factors to review uh, division problems is because um, in the worksheet, you're given like a number and you're told to make an array for that number. And so I'm going to give you a different example that's been, that's different than what's on that page. And we're going to take the number 12. Now, if I am given the number 12, that's really like the product that I'm given. And we have learned this year that if I'm given the product, but I've got to find the dimensions or I've got to find one of the dimensions, then this is really um, a division type thinking problem because I'm given the, the whole. And we're given the whole, we call that in division, the dividend, okay? So we know the total amount of squares or the total amount of objects in our, in our array. And so just to review what an array is, an array in math is um, lining up objects in rows and columns perfectly to kind of form a rectangle. And when we form, form a perfect rectangle, that means we don't have any remainders. Um, now, if we're not able to form a perfect rectangle and we have something uh, wacky out to the side, then those are our remainders if we're talking in terms of division. But with 12, there are um, different ways that we can arrange 12 objects into an array and have different numbers of rows and columns. So I want to go over with you some of those possibilities that you could choose for 12. Now, we always know that we can do one row of 12. And so um, I believe on your paper it said, do not use one as a factor. But I just want to show you how one can be a factor. So if we have one row and we have 12 total, how many has to be in that array in, in one row? Obviously, you guys know this, that it would have to be 12. So let me put that into 12 equal parts. Flip us into thirds. And I should have 12 equal parts there. 1 times 12 is 12. Okay? And so that is an array. You can also do arrays with just individual objects like little dots or stars or hearts or in real life apples or um, oranges. But there you are. 1 times 12 is 12. One group of 12 is 12. Now, that's not the only possible array that you can make. It's not the only possible perfect array that you can make. So what are some other ways to make 12 in an array? Can you do two rows? The answer is yes, you can. And so if I have two rows, Okay, two rows. How many are going to go in each row? Build it. Have two rows. How many go in each row to make 12? Two groups of six. So two groups of six are 12. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 12. So that's another way to make 12. Two times six. So, so far we have 1 times 12 and 2 times 6. Those both make 
an array of 12. Is there any other ways to make 12 in an array into rows and columns? And the answer is yes, I'm going to do it over here. What if we try, we've tried one row, we've tried two rows. Can you do three rows? Yes, you can. This way. So if I have three rows, how many columns must I have so that I have 12 boxes, that product there? Well, 12 split three ways would be, and there, there's that division that comes into play would be four in each row. Three times four is 12, right? So we have three times four. And all of those equal 12. Now, obviously, you can flip how many rows and how many columns you have, and you have part of that fax family, four times three. So it really doesn't matter which way you turn it. And that's that commutative property of multiplication that's in play there. If we can flip that around and have four rows of three, and that's still 12, 12 squares inside, three, six, nine, 12. So it doesn't matter which way the factors go. When they get multiplied, you get the same product, okay? So those are some possibilities there. Now, I believe, let me look back. On that first problem, you were also asked to give the division facts that go with it because I really want you to really make a connection between multiplication and division, how um, they help you solve one another, okay? Like if you know your multiplication facts really well and you know and you have a good understanding of multiplication, division becomes a lot simpler. So you were asked to give the whole facts family for one of the arrays that you built, okay? So let's say that we are going to go with, since I've already got this one built here, 3 times 4 is 12, and I realize that I can just rotate that array and do 4 times 3 is 12. Now, what are the division facts that go along with this? In division, we start with our whole amount, so the number of squares that are inside that array, which is 12. That's our dividend. And how are we splitting that dividend? We're either splitting it into three rows or we're splitting it into four columns. If we split it into three rows, how many are in each row? Four. If we split our dividend into four columns, how many um, we have four columns, how many are in each column? The answer is three. And there you have your fact family for that array. Every array, every rectang rectangular array has four, um, well, there is a special kind, has uh, most of them have four um, equations. There are some that are very special called square arrays, and they don't have as many um, equations um, that go with their array. Let me just show you with the number nine real quick. I'm sorry. I always get off in, on tangents in class too. Like, I always think about what I'm saying. And it's like, is it always true? Well, no, it's not always true. So let me show you an example where it's not true so that you really understand. I'm wackadoodle sometimes, aren't I, kiddos? Um, but hey, that helps us learn and that helps us grow and not plateau, right? So in most cases, you will have four different equations that go with your um, array, except for square numbers. And square numbers are um, when you have not as a square number because um, if you multiply three times three, so if I make an array of three times three, so three rows and three columns, I have the same number of rows and the same number of columns and that makes a perfect square. Let's say each one of these is like three inches by three inches, and I make a perfect three by three inch by three inch square. So this doesn't have as many uh, um, equations that go along with it. It only has two. Three times three is nine, and nine divided by three is three. So square numbers, they only really have two equations that go with their um, array. Okay, and um, 
but rectangular arrays um, have four. Does that make sense? I hope it's making some sense to you guys. All right, so hopefully that helps you with the first part of that worksheet. So arrays, they are building um, a certain number in rows and columns and make that perfect rectangle, okay? So let me, let me jump down here to factors then. Okay, so what are factors? Really hard word for kids to wrap their mind around and it's okay if you still struggle with understanding that word. So um, you are learning and growing. Factors are the numbers that you multiply to get a product. They are also the numbers, um, if you really think about it, they're also the numbers that show up in the second and third parts of your division equation. They are the, the divisor and the, the quotient. Okay, so dividend, divisor, quotient. So those factors turn out to be the, the divisor and the quotient. Okay, so when you are asked to list the factor, you are really thinking in a division sort of way. You're given a number like 12 or a number like 9, and you're asked to tell all the factors of that particular number. So that's why we have you build the arrays first to, to get you thinking about, oh, there's many different ways usually to build numbers. Not always, right? And when there's only one possible kind of array that you can build, we call those prime numbers. But when there's... Um, Two or more ways to build an array, we call those composite numbers. So, factors. Okay, so you, in the, in the example, it gives you the factors of 12. But well, we kind of already figured out the factors of 12, so I'm going to pick a different number. A number that's not on your page. Let me look. Hmm. What would be a good one that has several? Let's go with... We'll go with 18. So if I'm given the number 18 and I'm asked to find all the factors of 18, let me separate this here. All the factors of 18, I need to list all the ways that 8, like, how can I explain this? Um, the, the divisibility of 18, like how can I divide 18 equally into equal groups? So um, we use something called a factor rainbow not a special math term or anything it's just something that a little gimmick that we use to help us remember and I'm sure you do and we always start with like one we always know one is a factor of any number so one times 18 we put 18 all the way out here and we kind of connect them and we say one times 18 is 18 okay then we start thinking okay what about two is two a factor of 18 Yes, 2 times 9 equals 18. And then you think, well, will 3 work? Yeah, 3 works. If we're going to build that array, we can do 3 rows of 6. So I'll list 3, and I'll list 6. 3 times 6 is 18. Then I go, well, okay, will 4 work? 4 groups of... Well, 4 groups of 4 is 16. Four groups of five is 20. 18 is somewhere in the middle there. So it's not going to work out perfectly. I'm not saying that you can't divide 18 by four, but you're going to have a remainder. If you're going to have a remainder, then it's not a factor. So I skip over four. Will five work? Well, five times three is 15, and five times four is 20, and 18 is somewhere in between there. So no, it won't work. There will be remainders if I try. Um, what about six? And then I already got six. So when you start repeating yourself or you find a perfect square number, then you know you're done with your factor rainbow. So these are all the factors of 18. And we call that the factor rainbow to help us get there. So when you're listing them, you can list them as 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Those are the six factors of 18. And 18 is composite because it has more than um, two factors. It has... Um, um, well, if it only has itself in one, it's a prime number. If it has more than itself in one, then it's a composite number. Okay, so I'll be out there in a minute, guys. 
So that is a composite number. Now in part three, you're asked to circle the prime numbers in problem two. Don't forget to do that. Right there. Sometimes we skip over things in class because we don't like, we just, it's like one sentence and we skip over it, but don't skip over it because that's really important. And then part B says draw a square around the square numbers. And we just talked about square numbers up here. Square numbers. So I want to give you one example of a prime number before I stop. No, not right now, but a prime number, like I said, is any number that only has two factors, itself and one. So let me give you an example that's not on here. Okay. Um, I found one. Okay, are we good with this? I hope so, because I gotta erase it. From. So, if we take the number 11, let's go with 11. Is 11 prime? The answer is yes. 11 is prime. And why is it? Because when we start trying to make that factor rainbow, we know that 1 times 11 is 11. But are there any other factors of 11? Can we do two? Two groups of, well, 11 is odd, so you can't have two groups of anything that equal 11 unless you're dealing with remainders or splitting numbers. And when we're talking about factors, we're not doing that. We're keeping numbers whole. So 2 won't work. Is anything times 3 equal to 11? 3 times 4 is 12. That's not 11, so no, that won't work. 4? Four, 4 times 3 is 12, but again, it's not exact, so it won't work. So literally the only array that will work for 11 is 1 by 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 in one row of 11. So that is a prime number. So I hope that helps you out with that page of arrays and factors. And then on the back, you have um, story problems that involve division. And I'm going to do another video about that because I feel like this video is already getting long. So that was about arrays and factors. Hope it helps.